Okay, we're going to tie a bastard midge in the vise. I have a, a D102 barbless hook from the Allen Hook Company. It's a size 18. Uh, I like to tie this in 18 and 20s. And I like to use both black and red threads on uh, two different types of midges. I'm going to use a Vivas 12 aught red for this particular pattern. I'm going to start the, the thread about a third of the way down the hook shank. It's going to be a point for us that's going to give us some point of reference. Go ahead and lay a, a layer of thread down the shank to the point where the barb would be. Keeping in mind that midges are very slim so you want a very slim profile. That's why we're using 12 aught. If you have 8 aught that would probably work but this uh, just seems to do a little better job. Okay for the trailing shuck we're going to use a wood duck feather. I'm going to grab maybe uh, five-eighths to a quarter of inch fibers and we're going to make it about the length of the shank maybe just a little bit shorter than the length of the shank <coughs> the first wrap we'll make as a, as a soft wrap then the second wrap will make it a little harder and that should roll the material over to the top of the hook shank I'm going to size it Keep in mind this is a trailing shuck, not a tail. Bring the thread forward <coughs> to that point that we started our thread. And then we'll make a few more wraps forward, but I'm going to leave a lot of room behind <coughs> the eye. Okay, for the back of the carapace, we're going to use some bleached deer hair. This is coastal deer hair which is really pretty good. You only need about eight to ten fibers of this for the carapace. I'm going to cut more than that off. Cut a, a hunk about like that. We'll clean it up. And I'm going to stack it to even out the tips. Okay, I'm going to pull from my stacker so the tips are forward. And looking at it, I've got way too many fibers here, so I'm going to pluck out a few of them until I get down to about eight or ten. A few more won't hurt, a few less won't hurt. Okay, I've got it down then to about eight or ten fibers. And I'm going to place it so about a third of the length of the shank is of deer hair is over the front of the eye. And I'm going to make a soft pinch wrap, not a hard pinch wrap. This will spread the deer fibers if you make a hard one. And I'm going to pull it back just a slight bit. Okay, and then as I go down the shank, I'm going to start tightening up those wraps, make them a little bit tighter. I don't want to make them too tight though because I'll cut the hack of the deer hair if I make them too tight. Yeah, I lost one. Okay, I've got it down to the end. <coughs> now I can bring my thread back to that starting point which is about a third of the way down the shank. Take our fibers, pull them over the top of the shank, and make a wrap over them. I'm going to check to make sure that they haven't slid around. They're not on the bottom of the fly. Lift it up. Make a couple wraps in front. Okay, we'll clip off the deer here, and just to secure it to make sure it stays in place, I took a little dab of head cement. Okay, 
then we'll go ahead and start building a platform or base for our hackle. Okay, for the hackle, we're going to use a Grizzly. And it's a size 18 because the hook is size 18. Peel off a little of the end down here. And I'm not really too concerned about the orientation of the hackle because it's a good hackle. It'll float no matter whether I tie it with the concave, concave side forward or backwards. Doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Okay, we'll make three wraps of hackle. And tie it off. And we'll go in and clip the hackle. I want to take my fingers and I'm going to pull this deer hair backwards towards the back. And I'm going to make two or three wraps right in front. I'm going to take our tie it off. Flip it, and again we're going to just a tad bit of cement, head cement right there. Since we didn't make many wraps to hold it in place, we need something to make sure it stays. Be careful not to get the cement in the eye of the hook. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and pull these deer fibers forward. Quite a few of them. I'm going to go in here and do a little trimming. Okay, then we have the Herder's Bastard Midge. Fish it, <coughs> fish it behind a crackleback or another dry fly. Grease up the, the hackle. Um, try to keep the grease off of the, the antennae and the body. Um, it'll float well in the water. Um, again, as I said, fish it behind a fly that you can see because it is difficult sometimes to see this in the water. <coughs> good pattern. It's a good midge pattern. <coughs> 